Hi and welcome to this short tutorial. In this video we are going to have a look at how to prepare your images that you shot for a time lapse in Lightroom and how to stitch them together in Premiere and to export them in your desired formats. Lightroom is great for bulk photo editing. Start editing the first shot from a sequence and make that kind of look how we want. And then we're going to copy the settings and apply them to the last picture. I often shoot time lapses either at sunrise or at sunset, so I want to make sure that my edits make sense for both light conditions. Looking at the histogram, you can easily see when more of, more and more of the tones drop towards either the too dark or too bright side. If you don't shoot with an intervalometer, that actually changes the exposure of your camera automatically. Then we can go back to the library and bulk paste the settings onto all of our imported pictures and hit the export button. Here we're in a fresh Premiere project and we're going to create a new sequence with our desired export format. When choosing your sequence resolution, keep in mind that you have much higher resolution imagery than if you usually film on your DSLR. Because you've taken the photos, you probably have like 20 to 30 megapixels, which means you can export higher than, for example, 1080p, unless you want to do some zoom or panning motion in your time lapse. Next, we're going to import the images that were previously exported from Lightroom. Now we're going to select all the images and then we're going to press the button that allows us to put them all into a sequence. And it will show us a dialog that asks us how many frames we want to allocate to each picture. Typically, for my time lapses, I want each photo to stay for exactly one frame. So, depending on your sequence settings, that means either 25, 30, or even 60 pictures per second. As the next step, I will resize my pictures by double clicking on the frame and then scaling the picture down so it fills my 1080p frame, which I've chosen as a sequence setting. And then I will need to copy that setting from this specific picture that we edited right now by zooming in on the timeline and pasting it on all of the images that we have in our sequence. Remember, you can easily experiment with different settings and if your time-lapse feels too slow or too sluggish in the end, you can always take the sequence and speed it up in its entirety. Export, we can usually skip the export of the audio since we didn't put any music or any voiceover on, on the time-lapse. If you want to produce an animated GIF, you can pick animated GIF in the export settings. It's as easy as that. Although, if you produce a GIF, I would suggest lowering the resolution because GIFs can get quite heavy in file size very quickly. Now this is what our result looks like. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Do leave us a link to your time lapse in the comments. We'd love to see what you all are creating.